Hi, I'm Kevin. Today, because zucchini is in season, we're going to fix a zucchini romano casserole. Now, I made the same casserole last weekend, and both my spouse and I thought it was one of the best zucchini dishes we'd ever tasted. The casserole is delicious at any temperature. You can serve it hot, warm, or even cold from the fridge. All right, for the casserole, you will need 32 ounces of either strained tomatoes or the tomato sauce of your choice, a few basil leaves. These are from my garden some onion powder and some garlic powder, about two and a half pounds of zucchini. That's like four or five medium sized zucchini, some salt and pepper, one and a half cups of all purpose flour or a gluten free substitute, five large eggs or four extra large eggs. And you want to beat these well and some oil for frying. You will also need some grated Pecorino Romano cheese. That's about a cup and a half and some shredded mozzarella, also about a cup and a half. I'm going to move you over to the stovetop so we can make the sauce. Okay. While my dog is busy eating her food, we're going to make the sauce. So, in a medium sized saucepan, add the tomatoes, the strained tomatoes. And by the way, this pomi uh, strained tomatoes is really fabulous. It's better than anything I've ever tasted out of a can. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder and just going to roughly tear a few of these basil leaves. Boy, are they fragrant. And then whisk the garlic and the onion powder into the sauce. And then we're going to heat this over a low flame just until the sauce begins to bubble. So once the sauce begins to bubble, just take it off heat. Onto the zucchini. Trim each end from the zucchini and then cut it into, oh, quarter inch slices. You will need for a nine by 12 baking dish, which is what I'm going to use. Uh, you will need about 72 slices. Okay. All right, my zucchini's all sliced up. So now sprinkle the zucchini just lightly with some salt and pepper. Here's the pepper. Okay. We're going to let the zucchini rest, oh, for 10 or 15 minutes so that it can exude some of its juices. All right, my zucchini has been exuding its juices for about 15 minutes. So now what you can do is either flip the zucchini over so that the paper towel absorbs the moisture, or you can just take another towel and just lightly blot the top of each slice. We're not trying to remove all of the moisture from the zucchini, just some of it. Okay, we're going to fry the zucchini. Now, I normally fry the zucchini over here on the cooktop, but so that we don't have to move the camera around. Today, I'm going to fry it right here in my electric skillet. So I've heated the oil to about 350 degrees. Now, what you wanna do is test the oil. So take a little bit of the egg. And if it sizzles up, you know your oil's hot enough. So now put Oh, six or so of the zucchini slices in the flour. We're just going to dredge them. So flip the slices over. Then shake off excess flour and transfer the zucchini to the beaten egg. Okay. 
This is kind of like making eggplant parmigiana, except we're using zucchini instead of eggplant. And we're using pecorino romano instead of Parmesan cheese. And I'm just flipping the slices over to coat the other side with egg. And then let the egg drain from each slice and then put them in the hot oil. And they should start sizzling right away. All right, let's have a look at the zucchini. Yep, it's turning golden brown. So yeah, just flip it over, brown the other side. Okay. And as the zucchini is done, transfer it to a paper towel lined baking sheet so that the zucchini can drain. And by the way, you have to be really patient with this dish. Yeah, because frying the zucchini does take a certain amount of time. So yeah, be patient and just know that your reward will be stupendous. Okay, all of the zucchini is fried. And I can tell you that frying the zucchini is really the only time consuming part of this recipe. So now we're ready to assemble the casserole. So I'm using a nine by 12 baking dish you could use a 9 by 13 baking dish or even something a little smaller. And to start, and this dish is greased. So now just put some dollops of the tomato sauce in the dish. Spread it out a little. You don't have to have a perfect layer in here. Then add some pecorino romano. And by the way, I did not add much salt to the zucchini because Pecorino Romano is a fairly salty cheese. Now, going to layer in the zucchini. And when, when I made this dish the other day, I did count how much zucchini each layer required for this dish, and it was 24 slices for each layer and I did three layers so that made 72 slices yeah this is just one of those dishes that you cannot rush but it is absolutely worth every effort to make this dish because it is just so incredibly delicious Okay, now add a little more Pecorino Romano. Sprinkle that right over the zucchini. Then add some of the mozzarella. Or as the Italians say, mozzarella. There we go. Then add more dollops of the tomato. Yeah, this tomato sauce from Pomi is really incredible. It's better than anything that I've ever tasted that came out of a can. And to my surprise, my local supermarket sells it. So I suspect your market sells it as well. Okay, then I'm just doing another layer of zucchini. Look at all of this beautifully fried zucchini. And my mother used to make fried zucchini and she just served it like this and she sprinkled Parmesan cheese over the top. And we really loved it when we were kids. Then it's time for more Pecorino Romano. You can use as much or as little as you like. More mozzarella.
and oh, almost forgot. I need more of the tomato sauce. Yeah, just put dollops here and there. You really don't have to spread it out. And then the final layer of zucchini. This is a great dish to bring to a potluck or a picnic. And again, it's delicious really at any temperature. We enjoyed it hot you know, the first night that I made it and then I enjoyed it cold for breakfast the next morning. Final bit of, well, it's not the final bit of Romano, but it's another layer of Romano. Well, that was my oven telling me that it has achieved 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a dog over here who is hoping some of this mozzarella will fall on the floor. Now, the last bit of the tomato. Yeah, you could use a pasta sauce here, I suppose. But I really hope that you can find the pomi strained tomatoes because they are just so dang good. Okay, and finally, so I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. Okay, finally, top it off with a bit of the Pecorino Romano. And our casserole is assembled. All right, now cover the dish with a sheet of aluminum foil. And then this goes into the preheated oven for about 30 minutes. It should start to bubble. And then you remove the foil and then continue baking for another 10 minutes. I'll come back after 30 minutes. All right, here's the zucchini after 30 minutes in the oven. You can see it's bubbling a bit. So now this goes back into the oven for 10 minutes. All right, the zucchini romano casserole has finished baking and I've let it cool for about 30 minutes. So now I'm going to garnish it with a, some little sprigs of basil. Just for looks and for perfume. Then it's time for a taste. A taste, but I already know this is delicious. This is so good, you guys. The zucchini, you have the breaded zucchini has this certain texture. I can't even describe it. It's not mushy because we breaded it. And then we have the salty pecorino romano cheese and the luxurious mozzarella cheese. That perfect tomato sauce with a bit of garlic powder and the onion powder. I mean, it's just perfect. Lovely. Well, I hope you will give this zucchini romano casserole a try someday. Again, it's not hard to do. It just takes a little bit of time, but it's worth every effort. Now, I will post the list of ingredients in the description box below, and then I will have the printable recipe over on my website. And what else did I want to say? Oh yes, please give this recipe a big thumbs up. 
please like and subscribe and be sure to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video, which is at least once a week. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.